evening to everyone. And again, thank you for being a part of these Kingdom Family Studies uh, on tonight. I'm going to ask you, uh, again, if you're not talking, you your mic. There will be an opportunity uh, for you to uh, uh, unmute your mic and make any questions or ask any questions and make any comments you'd like to make uh, during the, this discussion. Even if your question doesn't relate to our study, uh, please do not hesitate to make your question and your comment known, okay? Uh, we're going to open up in a word of prayer. I'm going to ask uh, Brother Lewis, if you don't mind, Brother Lewis, uh, just give us a prayer to get us started for tonight. Sure, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for being so good to us. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. We thank you, Father, for your love and that we have blessings and promises in your Son, Christ Jesus who died on the cross for our sins. Dear fathers, we are called in tonight to study another portion of your word. We pray that you will be with our teacher for this hour. You will be with those who are, who are assigned in and listening. That it be blessings for us spiritually as we grow in knowledge and wisdom of who you are and your love for us and for us to do your will, Father. We ask that you will help us, Father, in our daily walks, help us in our lives where we have struggles and pains and trials and tribulations, Father. We pray, Father, we will be able to call on you, Father, to go to you in prayer when times are hard and when times are good, Father, to give you, to acknowledge you and to talk to you, Father, and ask you for your for blessings, Father, to ask you for strength, ask you, Father, for healing in our bodies are weak. And we just pray, Father, that it's your will that you will uh, be, the, be your will, Father, to help us to be good Christians, Father, better Christians than we have been in the past, to go out and spread the gospel, the good news of your son, Jesus Christ, to the world that is lost. Father, and for the judgment to come, that we are all prepared. We pray, Father, we'll help each other, Father, to stay strong in this walk. We ask, Father, for blessings for our loved ones. We pray, Father, for our enemies, Father, for they come to the acknowledgement of your darling son, Jesus, before it is too late. We thank you, Father, and we love you. And once again, we ask you to help us to do your will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Brother Lewis. Tonight, I want to speak on the subject of making a difference one family at a time making a difference one family at a time uh psalms 90 is a psalm that's written by moses and i'm going to begin at verse one he says lord thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations before the mountains were brought forth or ever thou hast formed the earth and the world even from everlasting to everlasting you are god you turn man to destruction and says return ye children of men for a thousand years in your sight are but a yesterday as yesterday when it is past and as a watch in the night Thou carriest them away as with the flood. They are as a sleep. In the morning they are like grass which groweth up. In the morning it flourisheth and groweth up. In the evening it's cut down and withered. But we are all consumed, or we are consumed by your anger and by your wrath are we troubled. You have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins in the light of your countenance. For all our days are passed away in your wrath. We spend our years as a tale that is told. The days of our years are three score years and ten. And if by reason of strength they be forty or four score years, yet is their strength, labor, and sorrow, for it is soon cut off, and we fly away. Who knoweth the power of your anger? Even according to your fear, so is your wrath. So teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. You know, when it comes to life, at the end of the day, it's not about, you know, your age. And, and I think this is what Moses is proving. It's not about how old you are, but it's about what you're doing at the age that you are. And so when he says in verse 12, teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Life isn't about, brothers and sisters, counting your days, but it's really about making our days count. And, you know, life is precious. We don't know, you know, if we'll even see tomorrow. Uh, but every day we ought to live our lives in light of, uh, of God's word and wanting to do God's will. And I think this is why Moses says, so teach us to number our days that we might apply our hearts unto wisdom. He's simply expressing through the Holy Spirit that you and I need to make our days count. Make them mean something. I believe for the most part... We want more out of life than just getting up every day, going through the through the same, you know, minutia of daily activities and chores. I think we want more out of life than just that, getting up, 
going to work, uh, eating, going to bed, getting up and just doing the same repetition over and over and over again. I think we all would agree that we want more out of life than just uh, the same mundane things that you just do every day. And let me tell you something, there's a book that tells us we can have more out of life. And I'm going to recommend to you and I tonight a book that tells us that there is more to life than just eating and sleeping and going to bed. And you know what that book is? It's the Bible. The Bible. The Bible teaches us purpose. The Bible helps us to see there's a reason to live. The Bible actually gives us clarity about what life is all about. When I read the Bible, you read the Bible, it should ignite your passion uh, about life in this world. There is no book like the Bible. Uh, the Bible is inspired by God. It is written by the Holy Spirit. And so the Bible teaches you and I the purpose of life. Individually and, and collectively, it teaches us everything that we need we need to know. But you know, primarily when you read the Bible, it, it teaches us how to live outside of self. What I mean by that, the Bible teaches us that life is not about you and I being selfish, that life is not all about you. Jesus said in Acts chapter 20, I want to go to Acts 20. I want to go to Acts 20. Now I said Jesus said. Now somebody said, well, he's going to Acts 20. What is he going to go there for to talk about Jesus said? Well, because Luke records some words in Acts chapter 20 that Jesus said that you do not find in the Gospels. And in Acts chapter 20, in verse number 35, Luke says, I have showed you all things, how that so laboring, you ought to support the weak and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Now, these are words of Jesus that Luke records, again, as I mentioned, that you don't find in the gospel. But notice what Jesus says. It's more blessed to give than it is to receive. You know what that teaches us? Life is not about you. The world does not evolve around you. And that's what, and I think this is the problem that many people have uh, individually and even in, in your family. If you have this me mentality that you think that you're the center of the universe, that the world evolves around you and you don't think about other people. But Jesus says it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. You know, Jesus had a conversation with a rich young ruler in Matthew 19. I want you to go there with me in his gospel, in his earthly ministry, in Matthew's gospel, in Matthew chapter 19. I want you to look at this. I want you to see this rich young ruler's mentality, beginning in verse number 16. Matthew 19, 16. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? That's a good question. He wants to know, what can I do to have eternal life, to live forever with God? He said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one. That's God. But if you will enter into life, he told him, Keep the commandments. And he said unto them, Which? Now I want you to think about this. He, he wants to know what does he need to do to inherit eternal life. And Jesus simply tells him to keep the commandments. But you ever thought about how odd his, his question is? Which? I mean, what do you mean which? All of them. Why not Why not all? Why is he being very specific on which ones? Why did he understand that he needs to keep all of them? But in, nonetheless, he asked the question, and notice what, what the response is. Jesus said, you should do no murder. You should not commit adultery. You should not steal. You should not bear false witness. Honor your father and your mother, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. So verse 20, he says, the young man said unto him, all these things I have kept from my youth up. What lack I yet? And so he said, man, I've done all these things. Man, and, you know, I, I've, got, I've got it. You know, I've done these things. I hadn't committed adultery. I haven't murdered anybody. I hadn't slept with somebody else's uh, hug, uh, wife. And so in verse 21, Jesus said unto him, now look, Jesus loved it. Jesus said unto him, if you will be perfect, go and sell that thou hast and give to the poor and you shall have treasure in heaven and come and follow me. Again, Jesus is not asking everybody to do this in this sense, but Jesus knows this rich young ruler's problem. And guess what his problem is? Selfishness. He's not, not thinking about anybody else but himself. This is a picture of selfishness. I have a lot and I'm gonna keep a lot and I'm not gonna give it to anybody else. 
And so he thinks life is just all about him. What can I do? What do I need to do to inherit eternal life? And he's not in the business of serving or helping any anybody else. And so the point I want you to understand is, you know, in our families and in our in our life, it's not all about it's not all about you. The meaning of life is not for you and I to get everything that we want down here. Now, why do I bring this up? Because those of us who are on here who are parents, who, who, who God has blessed you and I to have children, this is what you need to be teaching your children. You need to be teaching your children that life does not evolve around you. You, you and I need to be able to teach our children the significance of life here on this earth. And you need to start while they're young. If you have young children in, in your home, you need to start teaching this right now. See, a lot of times what happened is, in a lot of homes, uh, I'm going to ask Larry King to mute the mic, please. A lot of people in their home, uh, what, what, they, what they do is they, they tell their kids, well, you need to go to school. And that's good. Go to school, get good grades, you can go to a good college, and then you can get a good job. Okay, and, and that's good. By no means am I saying that that's bad for you to tell your kids to, to get good grades so they can go to, uh, go to a good school and get them a good job. No, nothing wrong with that. But... The problem I think we have is we don't tell our children why. We don't deal with the elephant in the room. And that is why do they need a good, get good grades? Why do they need to uh, 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 get a good job? And so why do they need to do this? Well, they need to do this for the purpose of being able to help somebody else out. It's not all about you. So you and I need to be teaching our children what is the purpose of life. You need to be telling them that some things they need to be looking for in life that are important to God and not all about themselves. So you need to be telling them things like you need to find meaningful work. You need to teach that to your children. Hey, you need to find some meaningful work. Use your talent. Uh, have some passion. Take the passion you got with opportunity. But why? So that you can help somebody else. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 28. Let me see if I can. Maybe I can yeah. Ephesians 4 and verse 28. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 28. Okay. Notice what Paul says here to the saints uh, in Ephesus as he talks about their conduct uh, and their behavior that they should display while they're here on this earth. In Ephesians 4 and 28, he says, Let him that stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor working with his hands the thing which is good why that he may have to give to him that need you see that so you and i go to school get a good job but understand it's not to hoard it to yourself it's for the purpose of helping somebody else out so we need to be teaching our children you need to find a meaningful job not only just find a meaningful job find a meaningful relationship Teach your children that people come before profit. Don't abuse people. Don't try to run over people for, the, for the, to chase the almighty dollar. You need to teach your children to find a cause in life that's bigger than they are. And then most, of, most importantly, you need to teach your children that they need to find their own faith in God. Not just try to live off their parents' faith. And parents, that's our responsibility to be teaching that to our children. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, Ecclesiastes, the wise man Solomon, in Ecclesiastes 12, after he experienced everything there was to experience under, under the sun, he says in verse 13, Ecclesiastes 12, 13, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work in the judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. That's the whole duty of man. Fear God and do his commandments. I want you to go back to the Old Testament with me, to the book of Micah, chapter 6. Micah, chapter 6, Old Testament. I'll give you time to find it. It's right after Jonah. It's right after Jonah in our Bibles. Now, this verse, I'm going to tell you, I have it highlighted in my Bible. And uh, I, I think it would do us good, you know, to highlight. If you won't do it in your Bible, definitely have these scriptures highlighted 
in your heart, okay? And that's Micah chapter 6, and I will go verse number 8. Micah 6, 8. Micah 6, 8. Micah 6, 8 says this. He has showed thee, O man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? But to do justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. I want to read that again. He has showed you, old man, what is good. And, and what does the Lord require of you? But to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. Now, parents, I'm going to tell you something. Our kids are not going to learn this from the culture. They're not going to learn this on social media. The world is not going to teach them this. They're not going to learn it the few hours that you and I congregated our church buildings on Sundays and Wednesday. They're going to have to learn this from parents at home. This is what life on earth is, is about. To do justly, to love mercy, and get this, and to walk humbly with God. Twitter ain't going to teach this. TikTok ain't going to teach this. And whatever other social media that's out there that your kids and my kids are, are, are on uh, for seven, eight hours out of their day, they're not going to teach them. So guess what? It starts with you. It starts with me. Teaching our children how to walk humbly with God. Now, the question is, well, well how do I do that? How do I do it? Okay, well, the Bible gives us the answer. I want you to go back with me to Deuteronomy chapter 6. Let's go back to the Old Testament, Deuteronomy chapter 6. Deuteronomy chapter 6, and we understand this is a book written by Moses, and this is uh, to the children of Israel. And I want to pick up in verse number 4 of Deuteronomy chapter 6. Deuteronomy 6, 4. The Bible says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one of the Lord. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might. And these words which I command you this day shall be, here we go, in your heart. And you shall teach them diligently unto your children, and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise up. And you shall bind them for a sign upon your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes, and you shall write them upon the posts of your house and on your gate. You know what, what Moses is telling them before they go into the promised land? He's telling them, you got to be proactive. You're going to go into a culture and into a land whose culture is different than that of your God. You're going to be around people and in the presence of people who who go against the commandments of the God who's bringing you into this land. And so Moses is telling, now notice this, he's telling the parents this, this is what you've got to do. But you know why it won't be done? You know, I'm going to tell you, brother and sister, this is key, what I like what he says here. Because he, he, let me tell you something, you're not going to teach this, and I'm not going to teach this unless it's first in my heart. And see, notice verse 6, and these words which I command you this day, shall be in your heart. So if they're not in the parent's heart, then you're not going to teach them to the children. It's only when it's in our heart will we then teach it to our children. You know, this was so important that, that uh, the children of Israel understood this, that God had Moses to say this twice. Go back, go to Deuteronomy 11. Deuteronomy 11, he says it twice. Deuteronomy 11, and look in verse 18. Therefore shall you lay up these my words in your heart and in your soul, and bind them for a sign upon your hand, that they may be a frontlet between your eyes. And you shall teach them your uh, teach them your children. You shall teach them your children, speaking of them when thou sittest in your house, and when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. And you shall write them upon the doorposts of your house and upon your gates. And so God thought it's so important that they grasp this, that the parents grasp this, that he wrote it twice in the word of God. Why? Because culture is not going to help you. 
the environment that you're going to, they're not going to help you. You know, it's sad for me to even say this, and I'm bringing it to our day and age. Culture doesn't teach us this today, and it is sad you might not even have parents who are godly parents that would teach this to your children today. And so, saints, we as parents, we have got to be proactive. We have got to be proactive. It starts with me. Don't leave it to the elders, to the deacons, to the to the preacher. No, you make the decision that I am going to teach my children God's laws, God's word. Hence my topic tonight, making a difference one family at a time. Because if you do right by your family, go back to Deuteronomy 6 and verse 2, there the chances are, are, are very higher than if you didn't that your children will hold on to it, maintain it, and teach it to their children. And so in Deuteronomy 6 and verse number 2, he said that you might fear the Lord thy God to keep all his statutes and his commandments, which I command you, thou and your son and your son's sons. See, he's not just worried about that family. He said, you don't worry about just your family. You worry about your family 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 after that so your son son your grandkids all the days of your life and thy days that your days may be prolonged see what i want us to think about is our actions today as parents those are christian parents on here our actions affect the future family what you and i do how we live or what we teach our children it has an effect on your grandchildren. God allows you, your children to have children. It has an effect on them, on what you and I do today. And that's how we have to see life. We really have to see life. And we've got to teach that to our children. We've got to teach it to our children. Think about, think about, you see, really what you think about is the lives that are not even here yet. He said, I need you to teach God's word so that they can teach them to your children and your children's children. People that's not even in the world yet. But Moses wants them to think about that. I want you to think about the people who are not yet even in this world. And I'm telling you, that's what each and every one of us need to be doing with our children. You know, one of the things I believe our children don't have today, uh, what they don't have is a lack of self-esteem. See, I, I don't think this world has a problem and our young people with self-esteem. I think you, most of our kids, because, you know, that's one of the things we, I think we predominantly drill into our children. And, I, and I'm not saying that's bad. Love yourself. Okay, yeah, that's good. Love yourself. Uh, you're amazing. You can do it. Uh, you're, you're, you're okay. And, uh, uh, but, but what about teaching them how to be humble toward God? What about? About teaching them that life is just not all about you. You're not going to always get everything you want. See, that's what we need to be instilling primarily in our children's heart is how to walk humbly with God because they don't have a problem with, with loving themselves. Matter of fact, 2 Timothy chapter 3, I want you to go there with me. Paul actually, when he wrote to Timothy, said that wasn't going to be a problem in these last days anyway. You know, people ain't got no problem with loving themselves. I mean, you just look, just walk down the street. I, I got daughters in my house. Just you know, you look at these young people today. They ain't got no what they call it selfie and all whatever. And I mean, they just love them some them. You know, there's just people that love themselves. And again, nothing wrong with you loving yourself and, and and again not you know belittling yourself. You know, God created you, knowing you're not junk. You know, if you're here, you, you're important. But the idea is, you know. You can get to a point to where you think you're more important to God than God. And that's where the problem comes in. So in 2 Timothy 3, in verse number 1, Paul wrote to Timothy and said, This know also, that in the last days perilous times shall come. Get this. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. That's a problem. Now the idea is, they will love themselves more than God. Do you, do you not think, you know, that we are living in the last days when you can turn on the TV and you can got, you got these young people in, in broad daylight just running up to people, snatching money out of hand just because they want it. Uh, just go into a store and just take off the shelf and walk out and dare anybody to say anything to them. Why? Why do they do that? Because they're lovers of themselves. They think it's old to them. If I want it, I'll take it. I'll get it. 
If I want, I don't care who I got to run over to get it. I don't care about if I who I have to shoot to kill to get what I want. And so we are living in the last in the last days. And so parents, Christian parents, we need to be teaching our children there is a God that you need to walk humbly before. So you, you need to be teaching it. I want to give you some thoughts, and I'm done after this. I'm going to give you some practical thoughts. I I, I conquered up that maybe will help. Uh, us, we as parents, you know, to to raise our kids. You know, my, all my kids are grown. I'll just say that. I don't have any you know, young kids in my house. All my kids are 20 and, and, and older. And uh, so they're all grown. And uh, maybe you're on here and, and maybe you, you know, you already raised your children. You didn't do the best you could. Well, you know, just ask God to forgive you. And if you still have some type of relationship with your kid, you know, you can teach them now. You know, they're always going to be your kid. And they should always honor you as a parent. That doesn't change, you know, just because they get older and of age. Uh, but but I, for those of you who got younger kids, you know, what, what we're going to be doing at Goose Free Church, I'm going to share this. November the 21st or the 23rd, we're going to be having a youth lectureship. And, and uh, you know, this is what made me conquer these thoughts up because I'm getting some lessons together uh, for this. And uh, I'm just getting some ideas. And I think this will just be beneficial. You know, for us to pass on, you know, to our congregation, take notes, and most of all, apply them to our lives. So what are some practical ways that you and I can help our children to see that the world don't evolve around this? I think one of the ways you can do it by giving your children chores to do in the house. I'm talking about some age-appropriate chores. I'm not talking about being a slave master to them, but, you know, make your child, your child make their bed. You know, they can mow the grass, uh, wash dishes. You know, you can set the table. You know, because you got to teach your children how to contribute to the to the world. You know that, that hey, the world don't evolve around you. You know, you got to help out. You're part of this family, so being a part of the family means I got to help out. Okay, so that's one of the things I think you can do. Secondly, man, you got to disconnect them from that social media. Now, again, you know, I'm telling you, a lot of these children. I was looking at some statistics. They had on TV the other day, they said a lot of these children are on the social media sites for seven and eight hours a day. That is amazing to me. Seven or eight hours a day. And for some of them, it's an addiction. You take it away from them, they'll lose it. Man, they go into withdrawals. You know, they, they just can't, seem like they can't live without 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 this social media. Talking to some, So a lot of them now don't even know how to communicate with people face to they don't know how to handle business face to face because they're so used to being behind a computer screen and behind a keyboard that they don't even know how to look people in the face and, and talk to them without trying to hide. And, and so parents, let me say this. If you have young children in your house too, let me say this. You need to be aware of what they're looking at on this social media too, who they're talking to, what's going on on them. See, now if they're trying to hide from you and say, oh, it's none of your business, well, that, 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 that's a problem. That is a problem. For them to say, I don't have nothing to hide, well, well, let me see if you ain't got nothing to hide. See, people with nothing to hide have nothing to hide. Just make sure we get that. And so if they always, no, no, and run in the room and, and, and no conversation, you need to find out who they're talking to. Do your due diligence. Roll up your sleeves and stop letting social media teach your children. Because the Bible is clear, 1 Corinthians 15, 33, evil communication corrupts good manners. Another practical thing I think you can do is you can eat together as a family. You can eat together as a family. See, going back to Deuteronomy 6, 7, that's a great time to talk about God's word. When you're sitting around the table and having come, eating a meal, turning off the TV, turning off the, the cell phone, and these words which I command you this day shall be in your heart, and you shall teach them diligently to your children. You shall talk of them when you sit in your house. Parents, that's our responsibility. Take some time out to turn off the TV and, and, and connect with your children. Find out what's going on. Talk to them about God. Teach them the importance of, of life. And then, and another thing, don't over, overload them. Don't overload, overload them. What I mean is, you know, one of the things we as parents, if we're not careful, we do, we overload ourselves. Overschedule yourself to the point to where the spiritual things are neglected. That's always wrong. 
So I'm going to tell you something. Kids can see hypocrisy. I'm going to say that again. Kids can see the hypocrisy. When you're telling them they need to be at church, they need to they need to read their Bible, they need to talk, and they need to pray, and then you're not doing it because you're so busy and you're overworked. Because it's going to show which which one you love the more. Seek you first the kingdom of God and His rights, and all the other things will be added. But you can't serve both God and Mammon. You cannot do it. One is going to give, and it's going to be evident. So don't over schedule. You know, it's good that you know you put your kids in extracurricular activities, but you gotta also at the same time be showing them what's most important. You gotta let them know, hey, if extracurricular activity is doing worship, now I'm gonna, I'm gonna teach it. Well, worship, God's gotta come first. God's gotta come first. And then finally, finally, I'm gonna say this: you gotta spend some time together outside the house. You know, if you got children, spend some time outside together. You know, go somewhere, spend time with them. You know, one of the things I was, I was getting this guy, I thought about Brother Lewis, man, Brother Lewis, Roderick Lewis, man, that, that brother, you know, his wife worked, she was busy, but he brought his two boys, yeah, to Nashville. That, man, that was such a beautiful picture, man, them boys with their dad. I'll take that to my grave, man, Brother Lewis. A great example. You know, here he is, father, two boys, you know, and, and here they are on a, on a spiritual vacation. You know, with a dad. I'm going to tell you, it's something they're going to never forget. They're not mm -hmm. going to ever forget. My dad brought me to a lectureship. And we talked about God. My dad loved God. He didn't just go to church. He showed us by example. Outside of the home. And saints, that's what you and I have got to do. And I'm going to tell you, it's, it's going to have an impact on them. And if it, it stays with them, they develop their faith. And they'll teach it to his grandchildren. And that's what we hope to pray that be God's will. Okay? As I close, let me say this. Parents, parents, we don't only, you know, just just go through life and uh, and and not give an account for, the, for our actions. We we go through life. We're gonna give an account, you know, to the souls that God's entrusted to us. Let me say this, we only got one shot. That's it. Once they're grown, that's it. You got one chance. And all I'm saying is don't blow it. We, we live in a, a crazy, a godless, a godless world. This culture is godless. And what kids need today, hey, more than ever, I believe, is their parents are going to step up. Step up to the plate. And don't worry about what other parents are going to say. Don't worry about what other parents are going to think about you. I'm not worried about pleasing them. We need parents who are on a mission to please God and teach their children what it means to please God and walk humbly with him. Pray with me, please. Our God and our Father in heaven, we thank you so much, dear God, for your word, which guides us in all truth. Thank you, Father, that we understand that this world does not evolve around us. Dear God, that we are servants. And Father, you have blessed us that we might be a blessing to others. I pray that we would instill that thought in the hearts of our children. But Father, not only just teach it by word, but teach it in deed that they might see our actions, dear God, that they might have a, a prosperous life, dear God, because when you only live in this life thinking about yourself, it's a life that's leading to the struggle. Jesus was a servant. He came to serve and not be served. And I pray that every child of God take the same spirit, the same mentality that Jesus did and that Jesus understood and as he told us, it is more blessed to give than it is to receive. And we do that, Father. It'll make this life worth living. Thank you, Lord, for loving us. Thank you, Jesus, for the sacrifice. Thank you, Spirit, for dwelling in every child of God to give us the strength that we need to live a life on this side of heaven that will lead us to eternal life if we are simply obedient and faithful unto death. I pray to all you'll bless every home that's on this Zoom call, especially those of the household of faith, as we make efforts to be good husbands, good wives, and good children, and good parents in the families that you've allowed us to be a part of. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, is there any questions, any comments, any thoughts, brothers and sisters? Open up for any question, comments, or even if it doesn't pertain to this subject tonight. Any question, comments, or thoughts? 
Okay, thank you all for your undivided attention. Uh, remember, we're going to meet uh, this coming Thursday uh, on Brother Green's Zoom page. And we are in the book of Obadiah. Okay, just one, one book. And uh, we're going to break that book down this coming Thursday at 7 o'clock on Brother Green's Zoom page. Okay? Okay? Uh, are there any prayer requests before we close out tonight? Any prayer requests? Any prayer requests or any family member tonight? Any prayer requests? Okay, if not, Brother Coffee, will you just give us a closing prayer and close us out? Okay, go ahead. I have a prayer request, Brother. Be sure. Yes, I ask you all to pray for my daughter, Samantha. She took a trip to Atlanta, Georgia with her job, so just praying for traveling grace for her. Okay. Thank you, Brother Green. Sure will. His daughter, Samantha, traveling. Anyone else? Anyone else need prayer for your family or anything? Don't be bashful. You need prayer. Ask for prayer. All right. Brother Coffey, uh, give us a closing yeah. prayer, please. Thank you, my yes. brother. Yes, let us pray. Most gracious Father in heaven, we thank you, Father, for another day, for another opportunity, Father, to gather together with the saints to hear another portion of your word. We thank you, Father, that our, our hearts and minds were... Uh, were uh, were softened, Father, by your word, was give us clear direction, Father, to help us be better parents to our children and to do things, Father, according to your will. We just ask, Father, that we will go back now and correct the things um, that weren't done according to your will and, and repent of those things and and even to help others, Father, to be uh, to assist them with being uh, good parents by sharing sharing your word with them. So we thank you, Father, for the word which was brought forth, Father, by Brother Stevenson and taking the time to um, to share with your word and rightful and divided to encourage us to edify the body father we just pray for all the things that were said that were pleasing in your sight father we thank you lord um, for his family father we just continue to, to pray for them and for health and strength we pray also for all the families father that are represented here tonight we just pray father that you would be with us all father as we will continue to understand this life better father as we continue to delve into your word we thank you father for the prayer request for brother green for his daughter samantha for traveling grace and mercy father that she's now taking a trip um, to atlanta and we just pray father that you will be with her father and she's a, um and while she's there and give her traveling grace father when it's time for her to return home we thank you father for her dad father who is concerned with her well-being being a good example father for what it means to uh, to be a father to his children and father is concerned for his wife and we pray also for brother scott and continue uh, to lift up his brother's wife and he and himself and all the all the saints, Father of God, Father, that may then may need your healing power, Father. We just pray, Father, that you know what they stand in the need of. We thank you, Father, for all the saints which are present tonight. And we just pray, Father, that you will continue to, to watch over the place of assembly, Father, where we go to hear your word, Father. We just thank you, Lord, for, for what you're doing in our lives. And Father, I also want to pray for our, for our three brethren, uh, Brother Stevenson and Brother Javier and Brother Ozan. Father, we thank you, Father, for the work that they do on a weekly basis. For all, the, uh, for all the jabs that they take, Father, for the sake of Christ. For all the things, Father, that, that are said to them, Father, uh, that may cut. But yet, Father, we just thank you, Father, that they continue to stand in the gap, Father, and realize there's a greater calling and there's a purpose for what they're doing, Father. We realize that we are benefiting so much for their work, that we use their, their, their ministry, Father, to, to teach us all, Father, even during the course of the week. So, Father, we just pray that their wives and their loved ones, Father, would will understand, Father, this is all a part of the work, and we thank you for their understanding spouses and, and the loved ones and the children, Father, who may see their father and, 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 and our brother uh, be as targets. But we just pray, Father, that you will continue to protect them, Father, and that, Father, you will be with them, Father, um, as they go through their day, and realizing, Father, this is all a part of the life that we are uh, being a part of. And, Father, Revelation 2.10 says it all, that we just remain faithful unto death. We will receive the crown of life, and sometimes, Father, it may may end that way, but yet we are still faithful, Father, the things of God. So we thank you, Father, for the love for you, for the love for the families, and the love for the church. Be with us, Father, as we now separate ourselves from this place, but not from your presence. Give us a good night of rest, and for your will, Father, to allow us to see another day. We just pray that our hearts and minds will be clear and to worship you in spirit and in truth. So we thank you and ask these blessings in your Son, Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Coffee. Thank you so much. I see a hand up, uh, oh, Brother Mitchell. Yeah, I got a quick question right quick. Uh, sure. Hold on one second. One second. I'm trying to go back to the scripture. I think you went to Ephesians 4. 
point eight, I believe. Uh huh. Where it says, "Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needed." Okay, my question in that is, at, at what point do you draw the line? Because I know all of us have family or, or friends that you don't hear from until they need something. And that's just about every time you get a call. Uh, 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 we may know of individuals that, uh, you know, they ain't really, you know what I'm saying? I put it like that they, they'll use you as a cushion, you know, because they know or they feel like they uh, they could they can get it from you, especially if they know you're a Christian. So at what point do you draw the line? Because I, I struggle with that a little bit because of the simple fact uh, I know, you know, family and friends, sometimes they can take advantage of the situation. So how would you yeah. uh, and, deal yeah, with that? Great question. Yeah, and that's a great question. Now, now, the idea behind what Paul is saying here is the context is, you know, you get a job to work to help other people. And that's really the idea. Now, we are the judge every situation that, that comes our way. You know, people, have, we, we as Christians got to understand, you are helping people sometimes when you don't get it. That, that, see, that's, it's about your, your, your spirit. It's about, you must as Christians, we're supposed to accept us. Whatever case is in front of us, there is no blanket policy on every situation. See, what we got to make sure we never do is let the world tell us what a Christian is or how a Christian is supposed to act. No, we're going to tell you what a, how a Christian acts because we're going to judge your motives, your, your the reason. We're going to investigate why it is you're in the situation that, you, that you're in. And so just because you're a Christian and have something don't mean that you have to give it to somebody. And so you uh, you got to get to a point where you stop feeling guilty by not giving. Sometimes you have to, you know, teach somebody how to fish instead of keep giving them a fish, as the old adage said. Give them a fish, they eat for a day, but you're teaching a fish, they eat for a lifetime. Amen. And so you only, you can only make that judgment on the situation. If you feel you're being taken advantage of, you've told somebody, I'm just bringing up a case, you told somebody you shouldn't do A, B, C, or D, but they went and done A, B, C, and D, and, you, and now they're coming to you, and if your heart is saying, no, I think this is going to, you're not doing it because you're trying to be, be hateful or out of spite or to think you're better. But I think it's going to be better for me in this particular situation not to give you what you want from me because you're not going to learn if I keep giving it to you. So, you know, that that's the only advice I can give because uh, at the end of the day, we are to help people. But I just want to make sure we understand that you are helping sometimes when you don't give. You gotta let some people just fall, uh, as the the prodigal father did. The father did the prodigal son. You know, he knew that the road his son was gonna be trodden down was gonna lead to destruction. But the parable Jesus tells, he gave it to him anyway. This is what he's gonna need to have to go through to learn, and uh, hopefully he'll get it. And so he gave in that case because it taught him a uh, taught him. A, thank God it taught him a lesson. But you can't feel guilty if you're feeling abused or taken advantage of. The only time people call you is when, when they want something. And I think you need to voice that to them. Let them know, hey, the only time I hear from you is when you need something. What's, what's going on? Oh, uh, you know, you, you let them know. Let them know what you feel. You know, they, they, they let you know what they need. And so you let them know what you feel about them coming to you and are talking to you only when they need something. Uh, so that's how you handle that. You're not less of a Christian because you don't give everybody what they want. Even though the world accused you of that, Brother Green. Yes, brother. Thank you for that, uh, brother Mitchell and brother Stephen for the answer. I like to add to what you were saying, brother Stephen. You know, the part where you said you have to investigate. I truly uh, uh, agree with that because you also have to be careful of what you're giving it to them and what they're using it for. Now, I know that the people say that. You know, once you give somebody something that's theirs and, and they can do what they want. But me personally, I'm, I like, say for instance, if you're hungry and you need something to eat and I give you something to go feed yourself, of course. But if, if I give you something and you want to go use it for drugs or alcohol or something like that, I'm sorry, I just can't do that. You know, I'm not going to help you destroy yourself. So I just want to add that to you, Brother Steve. Amen. Good point. That, and to the point, thank you, Brother Green. That, that's why you investigate and you ask questions. Again, you have to ask 
questions, uh, you know, about what, uh, what's going on, you know, uh, with a person, you know, why they keep, you know, always in the same same situation. And again, you know, let them know how you feel. The only time I hear from you is when you need something, you know? So you just got to talk to them, Brother Chloe. Anybody, great question. Anybody have anything else they want to add? Anything else? Oh, okay, brothers and sisters. Love y'all, the love of God. Thursdays, 7 o'clock, Brother Green's Zoom page. Have a good night. I, 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 I got one more question, bro. Okay. Uh, are you bringing that shirt out or is that shirt bringing you out? I had to stick you with that. Uh, All right. I love you, brother. Love, 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 love you too, brother. All right. Y'all have a good night, sir.